Woohoo! Jolly Roger Bay, by far my favorite level out of everything in Super Mario 64. This seemingly abandoned pirate cove was a place I'd come back to often, but it had more secrets than I could see with just my eyes. Why did this sealed off place exist? Did you know there's an inaccessible floating pirate ship way above the level? How about the crazy sense of nostalgia that overtakes you as you swim along? Well, there's a lot to talk about, so let's dive right in. Mario 64's worlds are some of the most difficult to pinpoint in terms of what they actually are. For you Mario lore buffs out there, they pretty much lead me into a conundrum. I've covered this in many other videos, but we don't know if these worlds actually exist or not. The paintings could warp you to other places in the world similar to Super Mario Odyssey, or these paintings themselves could simply be isolated realms. I've already done a four video series spanning that topic and everything it contains, so I won't get that much deeper into it here than that. The level itself, this isolated bay though, is just as perplexing. It's like a caldera because the level is collapsed within itself with giant walls on all sides, so it makes me think that this bay was once the site of a volcano that collapsed, or some sort of aftermath from a meteor. I'll talk about this in greater detail in the nostalgia section of this video, but this concept is also challenged by the idea that there's a giant pirate ship floating within it with seemingly nowhere to go, and that there is a giant eel that resides here too. So that means this has to be somewhere near the sea, or at least I think it does. It sort of reminds me of the sea area from Super Mario RPG, prior to entering the sunken ship. There's water all around, but you exit into one area, and there are tall rocky walls all around you. Similar to Jolly Roger Bay, a sunken pirate ship lays at the bottom of the sea waiting to be explored. A long time ago, I actually covered this place in one of my early videos, so certainly check it out if it interests you. But unlike the sunken ship in Super Mario RPG, this pirate ship is void of all crew. There are no ghosts haunting it, and because it is only wide enough to just fit within this level, it almost seems like it was transported here by magic and then forgotten. Jolly Roger Bay is always going to be one of those perplexing places that doesn't add up. Now let's talk about the strangest thing this level contains. Unknown to me as a small child, there's a pirate ship up in the sky that you cannot actually see. It's positioned right beyond the pillars that you shoot to in the cannon, and it's just floating there ominously. Now the thing is, this can never be encountered in the game, because the object and the behaviors that are loading this model cause it to not be there. However, if you boot up this level within an editor, you can see the ship in the sky. The ship is only there on the first star of this level, and it coincides with the sunken ship that is below the surface. Now the neat thing is, I actually went ahead and restored this ship on all the stars in this level. I tried taking a cannon to shoot up to the ship, but the actual model itself lacks collision, and you simply pass right through it. But honestly, finding the ship up here was super neat. To think, for all these years I spent swimming around this area, there was a ghostly ship up above me all this time. An asset left behind by a developer that never really saw the light of day. It's kind of neat to think about it that way. It makes me wonder why they didn't remove the ship either. Coupled with the hazy fog that only loads upon the first time you enter this level, and you have a perfect setting for a gaming mystery that will never be solved. The ship in the sky that was left behind. Now this part of the video is going to seem extremely familiar for those of you who went over to my now cancelled channel, Swanky Box Nostalgia. Only a few people saw my Jolly Roger Bay video about nostalgic experiences over there, and with my desire to rekindle Pixel Portals once again, I decided to add it back to this channel. Let's take a glimpse back to 2017 Swanky for one hell of a nostalgia trip. Jolly Roger Bay has one of the most relaxing and haunting soundtracks of any Mario level I can think of. While the actual title of the song is tied to the Dire Dire Docks level in particular, I think most people associate the song with Jolly Roger Bay, since it's encountered near the start of the game. Once people heard this song, it was engraved in them forever. Before even entering the bay, the section this particular level was located in was one of my favorite spaces within Peach's Castle. I always was fascinated by planetariums, and the ceiling in this room would have certainly made an amazing one. The child in me always imagined it lit up with various constellations, and I often claimed that one day my dream home would include a room like this. Nestled under a starry sky with a good book seemed like an ideal situation in this room. Coupled with the fish tanks on all sides, it definitely had creative energy flowing through it. 
Not to mention, it also had a floating giant water tank in the sky as well, which was definitely odd, but magical nonetheless. To top all of this off though, there was the majestic painting of the ship that hung on the wall. This really set the tone of the room, and it made it one of the most relaxing places in the castle for me. Diving into the actual stage though, Jolly Roger Bay was quite interesting. The first time you load the level, there is a fog that sweeps over the land. The sky is much darker too, and I honestly really enjoyed this variation of the level. However, once the ship is restored to the surface, the level brightens up and you can never again experience a foggy undertone. Sometimes when I was feeling more distant from people, the cloudy and hazy environment was nice to relax in. It just kinda sucked that I couldn't get back to it unless I started a new save. What was most mysterious about Jolly Roger Bay to me was how it was all self-contained. You had huge rocky walls on all sides that prevent anything from leaving and entering. The only possible exit from the bay was where the eel resided after the ship had surfaced. As a kid, I always wondered what was beyond that barrier in the dark underwater cave. However, this entire area almost seemed like it was a caldera of some sort. Like it was a volcano that had collapsed into itself and eventually filled with water. Perhaps the jet stream down below was caused by the escaping heat from deep within the earth. It wasn't exactly a cove despite it being labeled that in the Japanese version of the game. Looking back at this place now, it reminded me a lot of what Crater Lake looked like in Oregon. The steep rocky walls and the crystal clear waters made the child in me recall the fond memories of Jolly Roger Bay. This area is a collapsed volcano, and it looks like it is simply out of a fairy tale. If you ever had the chance to check this area out, it is by far one of the most beautiful places I have ever traveled, and I cannot recommend Crater Lake enough. Rewinding back to the level though, the pirate ship in this area sort of makes no sense. With seemingly nowhere to go, that would have to mean it was magically transported here or constructed within this area. Years later, we would see the same concept executed in Deep Dark Galaxy in Super Mario Galaxy. A pirate ship within a cave with no explanation of how it got there. Beyond this, the signs in this area explain that a figure named the Captain may have been the one who originally ran the ship. Upon hiding their treasure in the underwater cavern though, their presence is no longer here. Other than the large eel and the other creatures in the area, there is a stillness that resides over Jolly Roger Bay. A timelessness that makes you wonder what its past was like, and who were the original crew to the ship. During the time, my mind instantly made the connection to Johnny from Super Mario RPG, since I had only played that game in particular a year before this one. He was the only pirate I knew of within the Mario universe, so perhaps he had something to do with this. It was Johnny's sea after all, or so he proclaimed. The underwater cavern in this level really intrigued me as a kid, especially in conjunction with all the cartoons I watched. The concept of a cave being underwater, but not full of water, seemed like the ultimate secret lair, and as a child I always tried to wrap my head around this concept. Was it some sort of physics I didn't understand? How could I create this myself? Well, truthfully, later on I realized this cave in this particular level only existed in the world of game logic. Since the entrance of the cave and majority of everything in it is lower than the surface of the water in the bay, rightfully this room should have been flooded. In order for this area to be dry, this watery cave passage, or what people refer to as a sump, would need to lead to a higher point than where the water level is currently at in the bay. My childhood dreams of discovering deep underwater caves that were dry inside were, of course, crushed. But they still interested me anyways. Overall, Jolly Roger Bay instilled a sense of calmness when you would navigate its wondrous waters. The seclusion and the mysteriousness of what was left behind made this area truly magical. We may never know what the past was like, who the mysterious captain was, or even how a pirate ship of this size got here. But I suppose not knowing these things is part of the appeal. This is why Jolly Roger Bay will forever be one of my pixel portals. One last thing I want to mention is the song in this level actually got me interested in wanting to play piano at one point in my life. To some degree, it's still a dream of mine that I have yet to carry out. A childhood friend of my brother used to play this on the piano all the time. And he actually played it at a wedding one time and it was absolutely amazing. You know, anytime I hear this song, I just get shivers all over. My significant other produced me sheet music in a book for this track in particular, so it could be the first song I learned on piano. It's laid out beautifully, but it often reminds me of dreams that I put on hold. One day I will for sure learn this song, because in many ways it was the perfect gift. But now that I shared that with all of you, I'd love to hear about your own experiences. 
What was your favorite place in Super Mario 64? Was Jolly Roger Bay as special to you as it was to me? And if it was special, what did you often spend time doing in the area? The soundtrack will always be able to take us back to that moment in our lives, and it is truly amazing that it can do so. I'd love to hear your story, so let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And with that, thanks for watching guys and gals, and until my next video, cheers.